2019, the BBC and HBO co-produced a period drama about Anne Lister. She was a 19th century landowner, businessman, diarist and lesbian. The show follows Anne Lister's relationship with Anne Walker and since it has aired, a community has rapidly grown. We have a very detailed account of her life as she recorded everything in her diary. It's made up of 26 volumes containing over 5 million words and one sixth of that is in code. So Anne Lister lived in a time when lesbian wasn't even a word. She was called Gentleman Jack as a derogative term. Gentlemen referred to the manly clothes she wore and Jack was because she was gay. In 1834 she took the sacrament with Anne Walker, sealing their union. It's believed to be one of the first gay marriages. So Gentleman Jack's really helped with my mental health and anxiety. Uh, before the show started, I don't think I was as vocal. So I joined communities online where I discovered podcasts and people talked about how the show affected them and I felt really connected to that. So could you guys tell me a little bit about how you met and how the podcast came about? So I watched episode one the day that it came out because it had been an ad before Game of Thrones and it looked super gay. So I had to watch it, obviously, right? That's how it works. I watched it and was immediately so obsessed. I had to reach out into the internet to try to find people that I could just freaking lose my mind with the show over because I was worried that like my wife was going to commit me somewhere if I continued <laughs> just talking to her constantly about it. So I posted on Tumblr. Then I showed up and I was like, hello, I'm here for this conversation. <laughs> Very gay. Very ladylike. It's so nice to see a show that doesn't have a token gay character. The gay plot line isn't just shoved in the background and it's so small that if it's shown in a foreign country it can be cut like that. The main plot line is these two women loving each other. You see them kiss, you see them having a relationship and it's just so good for representation that that's not cut out. I think often these stories about like queer people in the media it, they're not realistic because you're not putting queer people in like real life scenarios. It's truly her life. You can't even argue. Right. And some of it is stranger than fiction, right? It's crazier than probably what we would have made up oh, yeah. if somebody had tried to fabricate an 1800s lesbian relationship <laughs> that ended in marriage. Like it would not have been this. I wonder why you have such a poor opinion of yourself. I don't when I'm with you. When I'm with you, I could take on the world. There was a point, and I've talked about it on the podcast, where I thought I was the only person on earth, like, who felt this way. I was like, why? And it mostly because I had no idea that you could be a girl who was interested in women. That I just thought, like, why am I the only person on earth who doesn't like boys? Like, why? Why don't I like boys? What's wrong with me? And there was this whole idea that, I, like, I couldn't conceptualize of any other reality outside of that. People who are there now, there's all this access to information and incredible stuff like Gentleman Jack that'll validate you and say, look, people have been gay all through history. Like you're not the first person <laughs> to right. pop onto the scene and realize that this <laughs> was going on for you. I only got to discover my identity once I became more active online. I didn't grow up in a community where I was surrounded by queer people. It was only when I saw online and that gave me the confidence to really discover myself. The show has inspired me to learn more about Anne Lister's life. So now I have a ridiculous collection of books on her. More and more of Anne Lister's diaries are getting transcribed and even though the show is like not on at the moment, we are still getting new content. I mean, we're still learning things and everything is still changing and I love that because like you, just like you said, other fandoms, it's like the show happens and that's it, right? It, they made it up the end, there's all the context you get. You can talk some about it, but that doesn't, that material and your basis of understanding doesn't change. But with Anne, you know, you think you know her and then something comes up and the code breakers have something else and they're like, oh, <laughs> we learned this about Anne. There's a lot there to uncover, which is really exciting. I think that's something that we're really passionate about too, is like, what are the parts that we don't know about? That's the stuff we want to talk about. You actually uh, hired a medium to try and speak to Anne Lister. I think that originated from a joke that we were like looking at our calendars and looking at when the next thing opened up and it was like near Halloween. And then we were like, too bad we can't talk to Anne. And we were like, and we were like, what if we can talk to Anne? Talk to Anne. <laughs> <laughs>
I don't know. I like. I feel like we. I. I. I tentatively say I feel like we spoke to the spirit of Ann Lister. <laughs> I do too. And I, again, I cannot wrap my head around that. I feel mm-hmm. like this is going to be a very opinionated. Like you out there as a listener, you're probably either going to leave feeling strongly one way or the other. Right. My heart is like yes, and my brain is like no skepticism, and my heart is like no, it was definitely her. It's like <laughs> never ending internal struggle. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Just some of the things that he said specifically, like the pairing my two genders and and born this way and things like that. It's like, you can't, you can't make that up. So in April 2020, there's going to be a huge meetup of fans of the show for a weekend of events, panels featuring the show's creators, historians who have spent decades researching Anne Lister and the podcasts who brought the community together. The lesbians are coming to Halifax. It's the place to be. You have to it's, make your lesbian pilgrimage. That's what it is yeah. for me. Yeah, it's definitely a pilgrimage. Yeah. Amanda and I are going to meet for the first time at Shipton, so that will be very cool. It has to be like at the place. Like she brought us together. We're going to go to her house <laughs> and yeah. meet for the first time at Ann Lister's house. The amount of engagement and interaction we've had from people has been astounding. Like we've gotten emails and we've obviously gotten, you know, journal entries for our listener episodes and things like that. And and we have been told that we have touched people's lives and like that sometimes we are the only space where they can be queer and they look forward to hearing us every couple of weeks. And that I cannot even begin to describe how much that means to Amanda and I. And it it's not something that we expected at all. What we're doing matters to people. And like that is so deeply moving. Gentleman Jack's an exceptionally well-written period drama. It just so happens the two love interests are women. And I love that. Behind the back, she's Gentleman Jack, the Yorkshire lady of renown. Never so fine, will toe the line, speak her name, Gentleman Frown. But shipped it all, she had them all, the fairer sex fell under a spell. Dapper and bright, she held them tight, handsome man seduced them well. Gentleman Jack, or oh Gentleman Jack, watch your back, you're under attack. Her husbands are coming, you better start running, for nobody likes a Jack the Lass. Jack the Lass, Jack the Lass, no one likes a Jack the Lass. The code is cracked, your bags are packed, the knives are out for Gentleman Jack.